anyway, tonight. We have a legendary figure with us from rock and roll tonight, Mr. Chuck Berry. And you people. I should explain, the studio audience got a little preview, right? Yeah. Because, because, of the, because of the rain, Chuck was coming out from St. Louis and the plane was delayed and so forth, and he just got here, so he did a little rehearsal in front of the studio audience. Is it worth sticking around for? Yeah. Isn't that what he does, the duck ball? Yeah. I'm gonna figure out how he does it. Chuck Berry is here, a young comedian by the name of Jan Karam is with us tonight. And an actor, an actor who's been in many, many things. You'll know him when he comes out here. Lane Smith. So thanks for coming. We'll be with you again. Thank you. All right, friend. Now. Now that, uh, now that Chuck Berry has done his warm-up for our studio audience, mm -hmm. it's time to let him do it for the whole nation. He is considered by many to be the father of rock and roll. He has influenced, I think, probably more rock performers than any other performer uh, in history. And he's recently published his autobiography called uh, Chuck Berry, The Autobiography. <laughs> well, I thought maybe it was a cute title. And anyways, there's a, currently a movie out about Chuck called Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll. Would you welcome the one and only Chuck Berry. Good to hear. We thought we'd lost you today. Really? Yeah, and yeah, everything. I know you got hung coming in and you came out and performed here for our studio audience and uh, had drove, a few drips today, crazy. didn't you? What? Had a few drips. <laughs> a few drips. Uh, we gonna do this right away? Let me do this. We're gonna come back and talk, and Chuck's gonna perform for you. Stay where you are. 
was playing when you were a young kid before you just take it up the guitar and just learning a few chords yeah yeah your envision all i wanted to, to have do a big backup band comp cards behind a big band tommy <laughs> you get, God, give me a job give me a job <laughs> rock and roll Ooh. rock and roll they have tried to put away several times some of the critics you know they said it was going to be a fad it was going to die it's never really gone away has it it's gone away there it is that yeah. was rock and roll you hear me yeah. that was is that gone away not a bit been there 25 years yes all right, Tommy. <laughs> now, a lot of the staff was sitting around saying, gee, you know, uh, Chuck, Chuck's band ought to be here pretty soon, or his, his backup musicians. You don't have any, you don't travel with a band. You just... I'm thinking about... Yes. So you I... can't, no, you, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got a lock on oh, these you guys. You can't, no, you can't take these guys on the road. But you just travel with yourself. You just bring the axe in and, and, and go to work, right? And a lot of the guys know my numbers. And, yeah. uh, but really, uh, you know, I stopped carrying a band because uh, in the 60s, things got a little juicy, you know. And then they got a little smoky in the late 60s. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And I didn't want any parts of it. Yeah, you know? I understand. So I go uh, on. When, I got to ask you a question now. And I, I'll see if you remember. W what was the first year that you did the Dick Clark show? Do you remember? Do you have any yeah, idea? Yeah, it was 18... <laughs> <laughs> and Clark looked just the same in 1890 as he does today. Really? Yeah. Do you remember the year? I think it was 56. Okay, no. It's absolutely 56. true. You won't remember this. I didn't remember it until today. A few months ago, Dick Clark dropped a picture off at my office. I was sitting at a set of drums. I remember that. Now, is this starting to make sense? Yes, yes, yes. And I was saying to Freddie the court of it, I says, you know, that's strange. So I did a little research, and I'm sitting at a set of drums, and Dick Clark sent this picture of both of us talking. And Dick Clark said, who are these two young guys? Clark looked exactly the same today as he did then. That's right, that's right. I was on his show, and I introduced, I played a little drum solo, and he came over and said, Johnny, I understand you're going to introduce somebody in the American Bandstand. And that's guess right, what? That's and who right. did I introduce? <laughs> Yours truly. Chuck Berry. Yes, truly. And I didn't think of it until today. Just a little squirt then. You That's were. true. I, yeah, I was a little squirt, he said. I, I was a hardly nationally known, but Dick at that time would get people who had been on national television to introduce new people. And I kept, this kept going through my mind, and sure enough, I remember In fact, that. I was a little squirt then. We were both yeah. a little squirts then. Yeah. The walk you did uh, for the studio audience a moment ago. Now, you're known for the duck walk. Was this a modified... Uh, you can, got a couple can, of... Can you just play? Can you just give me ten, ten bars? Can you, do you want, it, you want it, is it easier to do out here? Or no, here? no, no, no. He's, Is that he's, here? He's great. Okay. Just ten bars. You know, you know you're through in the business when you do that and you can't get up. Yeah, you know, right. Then you say it's time to hang it in. Yeah. Do you have fun doing the book? Yeah, I really did. Somebody a lot of work. Somebody told me you usually, when you perform, insist on getting paid cash up front. True. Well, well not cash, but things as good as cash, like cashier's checks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, I had a lot of problems waiting two and a half hours for them to count monies. And then they make mistakes. So up front, and then a lot of people, a lot of the promoters add taxes from mm -hmm. the government. They're not supposed to, so up front is better. I know a lot of people who go on tour run in that same problem. You go in and you, it takes them a while before they get all the, the house count, and mm -hmm. sometimes the performers have been stiffed. Have you ever been ripped off? <laughs> <laughs> no names. No, no names, please. More ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have, Johnny. I... Well, in fact, one time, and even uh, John Lennon said he had the same thing happen to him. One time in Mineola, Mississippi, <laughs> I drove down there with a big bus, had a lot of overhead with the band. Yeah. This time was taking band. And we played a New Year's Eve day. And at 12, we played from uh, 9 to 12. I would rather from 8 to 12, four hours, union thing. At 12, I told her one, I made sure I gave him a good four hours. I right. quit. Shotgun. Play until 12.30. The party's still going on. Well, in Mississippi, you played with 12. Did you got it? Yeah. <laughs> and the guy has a shotgun. You play as long yeah. as he's got the shotgun in his hands. Yeah. I, I noticed, I mentioned in the introduction, that you, a lot of artists who've been on this show, a lot of the people in rock and roll, credit you, would really, you know, admire you. They, they, they've stolen from you. Uh, you were the... Borrowed. Borrowed, bar, borrowed nicer word. When, when you were getting started, who did you... Uh, 
Who did you? Here, want? here. Who? I tell you, the main guy was Louis Jordan. Louis Jordan. Yeah, I wanted to sing like Nat Cole, with lyrics like Louis Jordan, with the swing of Benny Goodman, with Carl Hogan on, uh, with uh, Charlie Christian on guitar. Right. Playing Carl Hogan's riffs, who was uh, uh, J Louis Jordan. Right. And with the soul of Muddy Waters, oh, I had it all mixed up. <laughs> that combination? Yeah, well, That's yeah. a nice blend. Yeah. Were you and Presley friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. when he was living, you know. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> Do you still keep in contact with him? <laughs> well, he's, he's with Houdini, you know. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> he okay, we're back talking with Chuck Berry. Here we go. You've had an interesting full life. Uh, you, at one time, studied to be a hairdresser, right? Yeah, I did, yeah. Myself, both of my sisters were hairdressers, and I yeah. thought I'd follow it through, you know. Anything to have that nice house, nice car, and little money in the bank. Yeah. All the good things of life. Did you ever it. practice hairdressing for any length of time at all? Yes, I did. I put a few curls in my pocket, too. You know, <laughs> it wasn't right, but, you know, I wanted to start off uh, with, with a bang, you know. Yeah. I pulled a few, but they never knew it. I, yeah. you know, I can pull it over and drink. Yeah. How about the prize fighting career now? Didn't you try that for a while? Golden gloves, yeah. Yeah, I had a, it, listen to this. On Monday night, there was no, uh, there was no fight for me. On Tuesday, this a week, if we're going right. back, Tuesday night, uh, the guy didn't show up. That was great. On Wednesday you night... You got a winning record so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wednesday night, the, this big, fat, young kid came in. I'm not fighting him. So I, I won by default. Thursday night, <laughs> they sent a brother in. He was a little taller than me. He'd been yeah. fighting nine years, and I'd been fighting about three weeks. Ooh. And we had, a, in fact, it's in that book. That very yeah. bout is in that book. I ran all over there. Yeah. <laughs> ran all over there. Finally, uh, he hit me, you know, and I was going to stay down my eight counts, get back up and do what I could. It wasn't mm -hmm. but three rounds. Yeah. And the guy said, one, two, nine, ten. <laughs> Swear to God, today I'll say he did. <laughs> you know, one, two, nine, ten. I was out. <laughs> so that, that's your career, huh? That's it. <laughs> so that was the end of the fighting career. Yeah, I'd rather be a lover than a fighter anytime. Yeah. You, you in your book, mentioned you have uh, been a guest of the government uh, a couple of times. Yes, I've uh, served uh, uh. with the government, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean in the military service. I was talking yeah. people may, may be misunderstood. Well, make I it clear, Johnny. Make well, it I mean, you, 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 <laughs> you talk about being in jail. Yeah, about, it seems like every 17 years, I make a big mistake. <laughs> 17 years? Every 17 years. That's like the 17 year cicadas, you know, they come out every 17 years. <laughs> By the way, I'm in my 12th year, so in about four years, I'm going to start watching. No, I do. <laughs> be real careful. Yeah, really. Tell me about the movie, Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll. Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll. We had a music producer, no, music, uh, a coordinator, Keith Richards. Anybody mm -hmm. know Keith Richards? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He worked my brain off. <laughs> and uh, it, and uh, for seven days, rehearsal. And at the eighth day, we did the concert at the, uh, the, Hill Hill, the concert that you see in the movie. Right. And I was... <sighs> and we had to go over pretty much all the songs, you know. Right. But uh, here's, what, here's what happened, Johnny. In the olden days, when Chess Records had the... Uh, uh, recorded me, you know, I was 29 years old, okay? Right. Well, I was saying, Maybelline, why can't you be true, you know? He raised the uh, volume of the, the velocity of the record in Maybelline. I sound like a kid, you know, because I sing to teenagers. So Keith learned it right. at that high pitch. He wanted me to sing it at, what was that, 50, 60, at that same pitch. I can't do it. You know, I was speeding up the record. <laughs> So that, that was the real problem, and it comes out in the movie. Anyway, too. I hope it's a big hit for you. Yeah. What are you going to do for us now? Ah, gonna... do a little love. How about, uh, what was it, Tom? Ray, Ray, roll over, Ray, roll over, Ray, Okay, sure. Cut there. Yeah. Now watch me do Johnny B. Good. <laughs> this goes to show you.
juice will come in a minute. kind of change uh, horses here in the middle of our show. We have two other guests booked, and everybody's having so much fun with you. I am, and I know the audience is. I'm going to ask that Jan uh, Karam and Lane Smith join us on another show, because to try to get either one of them in now is, is not fair to either one of them. So can you stick around? Because the audience is yelling for Johnny. Yeah. Okay, now before... I want to ask you something else that they told me uh, before, you, before you perform. Somebody said you once kicked the Rolling Stones off the stage. Yeah, you Is know... Is that true? Yeah, I, I didn't know it was the Rolling Stones. Two oh. guys... Oh. Two oh. guys came in the Palladium yeah. and started, one started playing piano, one started playing guitar, and it got so good, they started playing so loud, louder than me, you yeah. know. And everybody was clapping and everything, you know. So I said, cool down now, this is a soft part of the song, you know. And he didn't cool down. I said, down, you know. Turn your box off, man. You know? They were riding right over Yeah, there. yeah. So I said to him, off. And my secretary told me, you know who that was who we put off stage? Yeah. Rolling Stones. Hey, Keith, come on back, baby. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, that's I apologize to him. It looks like you still enjoy performing a great deal. I really do. I really do. When I'm near that mic and there's people looking at me, it just goes all through me. Yeah. Is this the same? Is this the same kind of reaction you get from this one? Now, this is a real mixture of an audience here tonight: young people and middle and everything. Is this the general reaction you get? Because yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think 
that you played any particular age at all anymore. When rock and roll first started, you seemed to play with the kids. But now the There's kids no who started with the rock and roll aren't kids anymore. Just no age, Johnny. It's condition. Yeah. Look at yourself. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what. Since you haven't had a chance, why don't you go over with Tommy? Tell him whatever you need for a backup gotcha. on Johnny B. Good. Just work it out. We'll just watch you do it. No problem. Yeah, okay, go ahead. It's the same thing as the roll over the same kind of work we know. That's all there is to it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, make so easy. Yeah, all my rehearsals are two minutes, three minutes, no problem. <laughs> With musicians, I didn't even have to go over there. Oh, okay, trying to be good. Trying to be good? Well, this has been quite a night, I tell you. Okay. We, uh, I knew that you were going to get this audience going, but I never realized it would be like this. And all the time I've been doing the show, I can only remember a couple of times that entertainers and you people at home, the audience was standing after you finished over there, which is very seldom to do. So, thanks. It was really funny. And once again, my head. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Got to get a room. Remember that you said <laughs> Nightclub comics love used to do that. Yeah. Got to get a room tonight. <laughs> Never throw anything out. You uh, heard my, <laughs> my apologies to uh, Jan Karam and Lane Smith, and we've invited them to come back, and uh, they told us what we could do with that offer. <laughs> so instead, we are going in search of Harry Houdini. <laughs> anyway, Chuck, thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun having you here. Ciao. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Steve Lawrence will be here, Jelly Long, and uh, we're going to make a phone call to my babysitter, Mabel Gaskill. Thanks. Have a nice evening.
The stars shine on Late Night with David Letterman as Dave welcomes Tony Bennett and comedian Carol Eater. Then get the first word on money matters and the first news around the world with Bob Jamison on Before Hours and Deborah Norville on NBC News at Sunrise tomorrow morning.